Each year we welcome thousands of nonprofits to the Nonprofit Technology Conference. This year, the 12 NTC will be held in San Francisco on April 3rd through the 5th. Learn more at n10.org forward slash NTC. All right, we are back, and this is the final little wrap-up of the day. And I'm here with Yvonne from TechSoup, who is an expert in live streaming and the hybrid uh, meetings. So we just thought we would talk a little bit about what we're doing here with all of this live stream stuff. So Yvonne does a lot of this for TechSoup, and I was going to ask her a few questions about her expertise with live streaming. So my first question for you is, what tools do you use for streaming and live events? Okay, so for the last four years I've been streaming. Um, I've been using Ustream primarily as a good crowdsource solution to work with the public. Uh, we use Livestream from time to time for bigger events. Uh, certainly use a tool called Watch It Too for a show that we do that's more collaborative and great for online meetings with a whiteboard. Uh, I've used Google Hangouts quite a bit, Justin TV, a few of the others. Um, we even use QuickTime Broadcaster. So it's a pretty wide variety depending on the type of project and what kind of engagement we're looking for with our audience. Cool. So just to ask you about Hangouts, they're obviously kind of the latest, greatest thing. Um, do you have a way of broadcasting Hangouts to more than just the 10 people, or, or do you use that for smaller groups? Um, I primarily use Hangouts for smaller groups, but you can record and you can broadcast that solution. Um, so there is a gentleman at Google named Gopi, and he has been working out, for instance, when the Dalai Lama came together with Desmond Tutu, they were able to broadcast that out to everyone. Same with President Obama when he came into Google Hangouts. So there is technology, but Google Hangouts is less than a year old. It's still growing, and so the recording and the broadcast capabilities are still very much in their infancy. This point, I work with Google directly if I need to do that. Right. Cool. So um, tell me about your show. It's called Nonprofits Live. Is that right? Yes. So we do Nonprofits Live monthly. Uh, we use that on a tool called Watch It Too, uh, which I like because it allows me to bring webcam footage from multiple people. Uh, and so it's like a live interactive talk show. It has elements of a webinar. We can add slides. We have a whiteboard. We can do screen sharing. But I like it because we can have four or five experts on the screen at the same time. You get to see everyone and have a real conversation, a little bit more like a cross between a Google Hangout and a talk show webinar format. Cool. Yeah, it's interesting that we actually, uh, for Social Fish, we do a lot of uh, social learning kinds of uh, webinars, too, which have, uh, they're exactly the same concept. It's getting more participatory learning. Um, people involved in a chat at the same time as the, the webcast or the webinar. So it seems to be how people want to learn these days. Um, so I think it's a really, really important thing and an important skill for nonprofits to kind of figure out how to incorporate into their, their general educational stuff, right? Right. It's not just about the push anymore because the audience really wants to participate with us and we want to open the door to engagement. So creating an opportunity for participation, whether that's on a chat of you know Twitter or Facebook commenting and live stream where it's on your Facebook page and you're getting the feedback or it could be things like polling it could be even getting in community content and weaving it into the show itself uh, we're just getting started when it comes to participation in the audience right you know we're coming out of this television model that was very one directional and now we're trying to create feedback loops and so we're still experimenting producers like you and I are still trying to figure out how to do participation better Right, exactly. And actually, for you guys on the, the live stream, we re were really, really curious to know your feedback about you know, whether you feel like you've been part of the, the conference with us. That's obviously our goal with this. Uh, so you know, you'll, you, we want you to tweet and let us know um, how, you, how you felt about the whole event um, and whether we were successful in getting you participating uh, in the live stream uh, part. So. Um, What's the future of streaming media technology for our friends at NTC? What do you think? Well, I'm more frequently asked these days, how do we get started with live streaming? And what I've realized is it really doesn't take a lot. Low barrier to entry at this point, you can live stream off your iPad or your cell phone. Most people don't realize that with like Ustream producer on your mobile phone, you can go live in a minute while news is happening. So that immediacy, number one, being able to, as news is happening with your nonprofit, go live to your audience, tweet it out, Facebook it out, 
and get everyone to join you as things are happening. I would say number one, participation, number two, immediacy, and number three, ease. We're getting to the point now where this is getting as easy as sending out a tweet or just inviting people to a conversation. And we want to think of it as conversation that's both local and global. So we're dealing with a local challenge, right? We're here at an event, yeah. but we want to engage all of you who are at home. So send us chat, send us tweets, tell us what you think, and then we can begin to refine this process so that next year we're able to respond to your needs better. So TechSoup Global, you are obviously international, right? Do you do a lot of stuff with people in different countries? How do you manage the, I guess, the bandwidth and the time differences and all those kinds of things? Is it a little crazy? It is. It's very difficult to do a global meeting across time zones, right? So I know if I want to engage with Europe, I do it first thing in the morning, which is last thing in the evening for them. If I want to engage with Asia, I do it last thing in the day, which will be first thing in the morning for them. And trying to get them all three probably won't work. So I record the session, make sure the archive is available, and put a bit.ly on it so that everyone can get to it later. Uh, globally, it's still a challenge. And thankfully, people stay up till 3 in the morning and participate in these things. So for those of you who are in Europe and Asia, hi. We wish you were here. Maybe next year you can join us in Minneapolis. But for now, we're glad you're on the live stream. Awesome. Well, thank you so much.